up first is Dav with the statistics. Depression rates soaring among kids as young as 12 and young adults up to 25. No age group over 25 has a depression rate higher than 10%, but the younger groups all do. And the rate among college age adults from 20 to 21 has increased the most. Right now, I'm feeling down about what is happening right now to this world. But to make me feel better, I focus on doing something that I love doing, such as painting, drawing, watch a film, or read a book, or even think about ideas for future projects. In 2015 and 2016, over 15,000 first-year students in the UK universities reported that they had a mental health problem. Men aged 45 to 49 still have the highest suicide rate. One in four people will experience a mental health problem of some kind each year in Wales. One in six people report experiencing a common mental health problem. The suicide rate in women under 25 has risen by 93% since 2012 to its highest in 2019. Next is Gwen with her story. Mental health as a student is hard to maintain and easy to neglect with the pressures of living independently, being around new people or in a new environment. It is for these reasons that students are at a higher risk of developing mental health issues and many of them experience it for the first time living independently. If you develop such issues, it could be difficult to know where to turn in a new environment with new faces. At this point in the term, it's unlikely that you've made any deep and meaningful connections. Yes, you've made a few friends to go drinking with, but how much do you know about their lives before you met them? Can you trust them? Or will they listen to you and provide help? The answer is unlikely that you feel like you can 100% trust these people at this current moment. The internet isn't much help either. Although there are brilliant charities such as Mind, everyone feels like their opinion on what to do is the best option. But in reality, there is no one size fits all plan for mental health. For seven years now, I've been dealing with my mental health. It all began when I was incomprehensive. I was from a different area. The majority of the school were from cities and busy areas. I am not, I'm from a small valley. I sounded differently and more importantly, looked differently. And because of that, I was subject to ridicule. Um, I was told on a daily basis that I am a freak and I should go and kill myself. It was, after four years of dealing with this, it came to an end. I ended up in a fight with someone who called me a risk cutter and a disgusting faggot. I never went back to that school. School didn't want to know about my issues. They preferred to push me away than to deal with these problems that I have four years later. It's tough living day to day and going through the mental health system. I've been there quite a few times and tried to get help many times. It's not easy. You get ignored for a lot of the time you're there. And with COVID, it's made it a lot harder. I can't go and see the specialists that I need to see to deal with my issues. I've had further issues regarding mental health. But my story was shortened because there are things I'm still dealing with to this day and continue to battle. But I'm not in it alone. There are people who will support you. People won't tell you how hard it is to get professional help. I went for four separate sessions to try and get support, each at different times. But the support is there. You have to be persistent. And not everything they recommend will work. Up next, Katie on the Keto Diet. Keto diet is a low carb, high fat diet, which offers many benefits. In fact, over 20 studies have shown that this diet can help you lose weight and improve your health and maintain a healthy lifestyle. 
The body can run off different fuels, which are sugar and fat. Keto is so low in sugars, it has to switch to fat for fuel. Being fueled by fat puts you in a state of ketosis, which is perfect for weight loss without any hunger. There's been some studies done about the most vulnerable COVID groups, but a lot of these people had obesity problems or were overweight and had issues with sugar levels and high insulin. My mum started her keto journey two years ago. This is what she has to say on it. Um, I stumbled upon keto in uh, the spring of last year after feeling fed up of being overweight and my clothes getting tighter and um, being bloated all the time, my skin was terrible and loads of other kind of horrible little symptoms you, you just kind of get on with through life. So I found um, keto initially as a way to lose some weight and maybe see if it did work with the health benefits for me and um, and it did. Uh, by the September I'd lost 32 pounds so that's over two stone um, which was great and uh, I found that there was loads and loads of uh, things that happened in my body at the same time. So um, the headaches went away, the bloated went away, the gas went away. There were so many other little bits and pieces that you know you can't put your finger on but you feel so much better in yourself. So yeah, I, I love the keto way of life. Um, I wouldn't swap it for the world and I would carry on doing this now for the rest of my life. When I did Cardiff, last year that was my third half marathon and um obviously this year they've been cancelled but uh yeah so it was my third half marathon and i actually ran the 13 and uh 13.1 miles on um bacon and eggs in the morning and uh a peanut butter sachet that's all i had yeah it was um it was brilliant i had loads of energy felt great afterwards and the next day I had no aches or pains or anything like that. So um, yeah, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And finally, Courtney with what running can do. Physical activity has a huge potential to enhance our well-being. Even a short burst of a 10 minute brisk walk can increase our mental alertness, energy and positive mood. The NHS and many other health organisations suggest that exercising can help reduce anxiety and help deal with depression, but is this actually a fact? Being young and impressionable, it's good to see people who have successfully become 10% happier because of exercise. Do we ever see athletes sharing stories on our mental health? Well, here is Sadie. Sadie Cornish is a running club leader for the Blind Alvin Joggers. She suffers with depression and anxiety on a daily basis. Sadie has been running now for four years. She started the Blind Avon Running Club after she split up with her partner and lost her job. She explained that joining the running club has boosted her confidence, even just as a first step to get out of the house. Those two days a week has given her the opportunity to get up in the morning and improve on her skills. She says it makes you feel a sense of achievement meeting like-minded people who are going through the same thing and have stories that can make you feel like you're not alone. We asked Sadie whether she believes running can help with her mental health. She says yes. She says after exercising it's relaxing, it distresses you and it really helps put things into perspective. 